Red Dead Redemption 2 is upon us. These are massive story-driven games with huge casts of characters, so there's a ton to get caught up on. This is the story of Red Dead so far. Rockstar's journey to the Old West began with Red Dead Revolver, the tale of bounty hunter Red Harlow, but the series really came alive with Red Dead Redemption and the story of John Marston. In the year 1911, the Wild West is becoming less wild, and retired gunfighter John Marston has a problem. Blackmailed by government agent Edgar Ross, John is tasked with hunting down a killer and former friend named Bill Williamson. But Williamson is holed up with a gang in a nearly impregnable fort. John's conversation with Bill goes pretty badly. <laughs> Terribly wounded and left for dead, he's rescued by rambunctious rancher Bonnie McFarlane. Well, you're alive. Bonnie helps John recover, and in exchange, he does some work around the ranch. The two become fast friends. He also befriends Bonnie's father, Drew. You're always gonna be welcome here. After healing up, John heads to Armadillo and meets Marshal Lee Johnson. They share a mutual interest in taking down Bill's gang. You're a persistent little cuss, ain't you? Bill doesn't take kindly to this and kidnaps Bonnie. John rescues her from the noose and assembles a strange cast of allies. Snake oil huckster Nigel West Dickens, grave robber Seth Briars, and a con man named Irish. Together, they rig a wagon with a concealed Gatling gun and bluff their way into the fort. They eradicate the gang, but Williamson escapes. That's the last of them. We still can't find Williamson anywhere. John learns that Bill has joined another former ally, Javier Escuela, and the two are hiding somewhere in Mexico. John crosses the border in pursuit, and an awesome song plays. John meets a retired old gunfighter named Landon Ricketts, who teaches him a few tricks. Before he knows it, John is playing both sides in an ongoing Mexican revolution, working with the rebels and the government alike as he searches for Bill and Javier. After rescuing revolutionary leader Abraham Reyes from the firing squad, John is betrayed by Captain Vicente de Santa. <laughs> Reyes returns the favor and saves John from being executed. John catches up with de Santa and deals with him, then accompanies Reyes in an attack on a fort where Escuela is waiting. John takes Escuela and turns him over to Ross. The revolution reaches its climax, and John finds himself in the thick of the battle outside the palace of the tyrannical Colonel Allende. After a pitched battle, John spots Williamson escaping in an armored wagon and rides him down. After a final encounter, he leaves Bill's body in the dirt. I'll, I'll come quietly. Returning to America, John is strong-armed by Agent Ross into tracking down the leader of his old gang, Dutch Vanderlyn. Cornering Dutch doesn't prove easy. The old outlaw is wily. Preying on desperation, he's recruited a powerful gang, including many young Native American men looking for a better life. Dutch has long dreamed of creating a sort of better outlaw society outside of regular society's norms, but he's gradually become mad and murderous. With the help of a Native American named Nastus and a disgraced and craven writer named Harold McDougal, John manages to locate Dutch. He's almost killed for his troubles as a bullet fired by Dutch glances off the binoculars John is holding. Several encounters with the Vanderlyn gang follow, in which Nastus is killed and McDougal is driven back east. Finally, John and Edgar Ross corner Dutch in the hills. Using a machine gun and an armored wagon, John overcomes Dutch's small army and pursues him up a mountain and through a mine. In the end, the old outlaw commits suicide. Our time has passed, John. John returns home to his small ranch to find it in disrepair. There, we meet his family. His wife Abigail, a former sex worker and associate of the gang, as well as their son Jack, who spent much of his childhood raised by outlaws. Hello, sir. We also meet a cantankerous old gang member named Uncle who lives under John's care. Why don't I get to warm and tender embrace? John tries to rebuild his shattered life after his long absence. He returns to the mundane tasks of the farm, buys cattle from Bonnie McFarlane, chases off crows, and tries to rebuild the rift that's formed between him and his teenage son. But before he can get things back in order, a vast posse appears under the command of Agent Ross. Looks like things is about to get settled once and for all. John is betrayed. Uncle is killed. John holds off the army long enough for Abigail and Jack to escape. Stepping into the open to face his fate, John draws, fires his final shots, and is gunned down. <laughs> Three years later, Abigail Marston is also dead. Jack, now a young man, says goodbye at his parents' graveside and picks up the trail of the retired Edgar Ross. He finds the angry old man hunting beside a pastoral riverside. The two draw on one another, Jack is faster, and Ross falls. Oh, and then there was also an alternate timeline where everybody was a zombie. And that's where the story of Red Dead stands so far. If you're late to the party, don't worry, because Red Dead Redemption 2 takes place way back in 1899, before Red Dead Redemption 1, where we'll meet younger incarnations of a number of the characters we know and love, as well as some new ones. See you there. For everything Red Dead, keep it right here on IGN.